All right, so we just completed all of the letter forms, but now we want to design them and optimize them before we're fully satisfied. And the main thing to look at, honestly, is kerning, the space between the letters. Now, in the assignment, I give you the example of Stranger Things. A lot of people are very taken with its type design. Let's look at that example. I thought I have it open here. Nope. <laughs> nope, I'll have to reopen it. So it's in in the class. Signing in here. There we go. Now remember, do not close your vector.com window until you have saved it as an SVG. And I haven't saved it yet, so keep that open. I'm going to log in. This is also how we're going to post to Canvas. I'm going to get into the class. All right, so if we look at the assignment, assignment six, where we post it, you'll see how it talks about Stranger Things. There's a great article, let's see if this link is still active, on the art of the title. Yeah, and you can watch this video and kind of see the whole process for how it was designed. And what's so fun about it is they actually show the type design in the title. So you'll see the letter forms kind of come together and arrange themselves. That's why I use this as an example. This is kerning, the space between the letter forms. Letting is the space in between lines of type, like between stranger and things. And you see how the, the R and the S both overlap that. It's all very clever. So. Type design is often in those subtle details. So once you're done actually drawing the vectors, you might want to spend some time really looking at that kerning. And because I mostly took the spacing and the design of these letter forms right from the typeface and they did very minor modifications to them, this kerning all seems pretty consistent. But then when I get to the I and the N, that seems to be a little bit wider. So how can I play with that kerning a little bit? Well, each thing can be individually shaped. There are each individual vectors that can be tilted, right? Enlarged, stretched out, you can hold down shift and distort them. So just transform functions. So that kind of closes the kerning between the I and the G. I can use this as a bit more of an emphasis, this I. And now the kerning between the N and the I, I can tighten up just by growing, squeezing, tilting, and placing. So that feels a little bit closer. And then if I need to, I can always use my arrow keys as well. I can always go in and play with the individual curves. You know, send this down a little bit. Push this back. And always delete. See what you can play with. You know, to really control those curves.
There we go. Same thing with the G. We learned there's a lot of excess shapes here, right? A lot of excess shapes. Excess anchors, rather. So let me simplify that. Add an anchor point in when I want to control it, and then I can always just use that cornering tool. Can really probably get rid of all of these. Just so it's one point in between the two that I add in, and then drag down, and then play with the curve until it's what I want. And then hold down Command, and I can play individually with this curve. Okay, taper it. Yeah, so I think just playing with the even curve sometimes can be the best best option. Okay, so I have Nighthawks, and I like how that kind of looks like an inverted hawk's head there. I've got a lot of those interesting negative shapes. So now I'm done with the type. I wanted to add this little star, but just before I do that, let's save it, right? I'm gonna turn off the image and then I'm going to export it as an SVG. That's the only vector format you can save without buying a membership of vector.com. Now, if you think you're gonna use vector.com a lot, they're offering a lifetime use of it for around $25 right now, where you can use all of the, the features, like being able to download in different formats having more space. But this is just the free version. This is what I'm using. Make sure you know where that download went. It will go to your, your downloads on your computer. And then I'm gonna save that onto my desktop, that SVG. Now that is a vector file. That's all of this together. We'll bring that in to PhotoP and we'll make sure that our PhotoP type setting is at least 16 by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch with image size. So I'm gonna really make this bigger, 16 inches by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And 16 by 20 is the minimum I want you to do. Actually, we were doing 300 pixels per inch because we're doing freeware. All right, resample it. There we go. It doesn't matter that it's all really blocky because it got upsampled. It matters that I have place a place to set my type. So now I take that SVG and I move it into, drag and drop it into the full resolution photo P file. Let me get this all on screen for you so I can see my layers. It comes in as a smart object, and then, because it's based on a vector, I can make it bigger and place it in. And you see how that fits within my type blocking pretty well. Might move it up here. Well, I'll just leave it right there for now. All right, and now I have it as a smart object. Now I want to save this. as a PSD, and now I save it with my name. And this is assignment six, type poster layout. So it's no longer just my sketch. I'm gonna save it to my desktop as a PSD. 
Then I'm going to turn off the type blocking. So it just looks like this. And then export it as a JPEG. Or you could do it as a PNG. Either works. I'll just do it as a JPEG. To the desktop. This is my black type that I can then put into Canvas. So I have my PSD, I marked that green. I have my SVG, my transferable vector for the type, I marked that as purple. And I have the JPEG of the black type on its own, which I'm going to move into the assignment in Canvas because that's the first actual requirement, is your black type solution. Black vector type solution. And because you can't put a vector onto a website online, we have to rasterize it. So I'll say first requirement. And this is hopefully what you guys can get done on your work from home day. Black vector type saved at 16 saved as a smart object layer in raster program at 16 inches by 20 inches at 300 pixels per inch. All right, then I just put in the JPEG. And I have my first component. And then when we come back to class on Wednesday to finish up our poster, we'll do simple placement of the type design with, this will all be in Photo P, with our full resolution spot illustration, create a background, and then play with color variations just by using layer styles. It's good to have inspirations, right? Let's see, let's do a different kind of gradient. You know, for instance, something like that. And then I could also add a stroke. I can just do all kinds of things. Yeah, I like it on the outside. And you'll see if you designed the type as a vector, where you really understand it, the type design will just be perfectly clean no matter what you do. All right, and we can add color holds to that. We can add texture to it. We can add drop shadows. We can add all kinds of texture and effects. But I might actually add this star now because I'm not finished with my design yet. I was thinking... It might be nice, I'll just save that progress. Might be nice if I had this little embellishment, this little icon image above the hawks part. I don't know, I just thought that was would make it a little special. So how can I do that as a vector? Make that part of the type? I'm going to use my shape tools, right? And I'm just gonna use the standard star make use of that and then rotate it drop it down where I think it needs to go if I need to shrink the tools a little bit for my laptop I can click on the URL bar and then do command minus and that will shrink the tools Whereas when I click on the actual image and do command plus and minus, that will zoom in and out. Okay, now I'm going to take the opacity down on this vector so I can overlap it with these cutouts, these triangular shapes. Now this is the trick I'm actually going to do. I'm going to copy and paste that same star. 